What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. Amp Capo, Black Adonis Games. We are going to continue on with part two of our series of AGLS Tutorials and Adventure Game Locomotion System by Jacob W. Today, we are going to be creating teams or factions or basically just setting up which characters your enemy AI interact with all right, so let's go ahead and we are going to start off by going to our advanced locomotion v4 folder go to your blueprints and then we're going to go to the human ai logic and you want to click on the als base ai character blueprint you want to make sure that you are in the event graph and the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a custom event and you can call your custom event whatever you would like i am going to title my custom event as team check so once you got your team check you're going to move it up a little bit we're going to require a little bit of space and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some variables we're going to create about four of these but we're going to start off with this one here we're going to call it is enemy of all and i like to put question marks behind these because i consider them as questions basically to be answered true, false, yes, no, or whatever. The next one we are gonna create is gonna be is enemy of player. And then we're gonna create another one is enemy of companion. We're gonna have quite a few here. Um, we definitely wanna do is enemy of zombie. And we'll put an S on that zombies. And then after that, what we're going to do is we are going to drag one of these in. So we'll first start off with is enemy of all. We're going to just drag this in and we're going to do get is enemy of all. Drag off of this and put a branch. Off of this, we want to take team check and move it into the branch. Let's compile and save that. Next, we want to go ahead and go to the player and type in tags. And remember in the last video, I explain the tag system and how it works. So what we're gonna do is eliminate these tags and make them be selectable per character. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ENALS human female character, which is my main player character. And we're gonna go here, we're gonna get tags. And right here, you will see tags. Off of this, we wanna go and put add, and we're gonna use add unique. That's when you want to copy this tag and you want to paste it as the unique tag. All right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take all of the tags and we want to do this with all of them. So if we go look at our character and it's only the EN tags, because as I explained, those are the enemy tags. So we need three more of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag off. Actually, I'll just duplicate these. I'll remove the name, everything except EN. Make this easy on myself. And then we'll duplicate it two more times. So if it's an enemy of all, we're basically going to take all of these tags. We're going to put these in a row, connect them together here. And then we're just going to go into our tags. And whatever tags you have here that are EN, enemies for the AI, you want to add them to this section because this is going to be enemy of all. So I'm going to go ahead and select the next tag, copy. And we actually don't even need to keep the ENs. It's in the name. So there we go. And then this one we're going to copy and then this one we're going to copy so this should be the last one for now all right so now we have all of our characters we have our zombie and we have everyone except let's go ahead and we want to add one more and that would be the one for the anim character because you may still be using that as your base character so i want to go here to our logic we're going to go ahead and use our als anim man character some people still debug with it, so I want to add it as well on this list of characters. And let me go get that name, copy. And then this one, we really do want to use the EN. And you don't have to do this character. I'm just doing it because it is the player character. All right, so next, we want to go ahead, compile, save that. We're going to go down and we're going to grab the next one. Is enemy of player. We're going to get is enemy of player. I'm going to go ahead, copy the branch. We'll go ahead and hook this up. Now, if this is false, we want this to go here. If this is the enemy of all, then we're just gonna let this ride. It'll basically add these tags dynamically to the AI character. The next one that we wanna do is, is enemy of player. And we wanna put, if this is true, the only one we wanna worry about here is our main character, which in my case is my ALS female character BP. If you go here and look, 
that's this one so i'm just going to duplicate it and i'll bring it down here also i did say that i wanted the als mannequin character which is here so we'll go ahead and duplicate that and we'll hook this one up as well so that if it is the als and a man character then it will work um i also could go as far as to hook this als and a many character up because all of these are characters like even this one here this ania character so that if i am using this as my main character then it will automatically add the tag for that character here so remember, you have to copy the name after you clone a node. Otherwise, it's going to put a whole bunch of information in there that's just going to be in the way and you have to try to remove it. So we're just going to copy this name after the EN, put that in there. So there we go. So now that'll be any of the characters that I may use as a player. Now we're going to say uh, is enemy of zombies or companion. We can put that in as well. I haven't made a companion yet, so let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back and finish adding these. So we will go to our human AI logic here. I already created one. What you want to do is you want to take and duplicate your ALS human AI character blueprint, and then name it human ALS AI character companion, or whatever you want to name yours. So this is my companion character, so I'm going to go ahead, and that's the name that I'm going to want to copy for my companion. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this, bring it in. I'll go ahead and just duplicate the branch, bring it down here. If this reads false, we're gonna go ahead and come down and check the next condition. Also, at the end of this check, you wanna bring it down and check the next condition because even though it may be enemy of the player, it also may be the enemy of someone else under one of the next conditions that we're gonna provide here. If you look here is enemy of all the reason why I'm not doing it here is because this will be where every single character is. Every character will be listed here. So it won't have to do a check beyond that. But these individual checks, it will have to do a check for each one of these after it checks because it could be any one of these following conditions. If you understand that. So if this is true, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and this is enemy of companion. I already have my companion blueprint, so I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to duplicate it here, bring it down here, and then I'm going to go copy my character's name and I'm going to place it here. All right, so now that'll take care of the companion. Now we could say it's enemy of zombies and so on. So you guys are getting the pattern here, I'm sure. So we're going to go ahead and bring in zombies, get zombies. We're going to place it in the condition if this is false. And after this check, we'll check this condition. And then we just need to bring this and clone any one of these duplicate it, I should say. Bring it down here. And we're going to go to our zombie folder, which is down here. We will copy the name of the child actor because these are the actors you're going to use as zombies. Copy. We're going to go back here and we're just going to replace all of this with the zombie. So there you have it. This is basically how you will do the last one. You just leave it open because obviously there's nothing to check next. But this is how you set it up. We're going to go ahead and note this now. So let me go ahead and we can note this blueprint, comment it. We're going to put team AI checks for team by bool. So that'll let us know that that's what it is. I'm going to go ahead and do what I always do. I'm going to go ahead and color mine up here. Okay. And then once we are done doing all this, what I did was basically take all these and we're just going to collapse this, collapse these nodes, and I'll call it team conditions. That way, if we come up with some other conditions under that category, you can put it there under team conditions and just to make it look neat, team conditions. So now what we want to do is we want to come off drag off of this and whatever you named your custom event mine was team check you want to go ahead and type and have it check that condition here so once this begins to play it's going to run through this logic and it's going to do this team check and then dynamically it will add these tags according to if the condition is true or false all right so if you got an understanding of that by default all of these are going to be false right now what we want to do is we want all of these to be 
visible so we want them to be instance editable and i usually put mine on expose on spawn as well in case you're using a spawner so we can just open the eyes on all of these here by just clicking and then go in and we can set them up like this and then if you even want to take it a step farther we can go put this and call it team and then we can drag each of these under this category so that way everything's nice and neat and organized so we got that together let's compile save and now i'll show you how this works we're going to go ahead and go into the project you can see i have a character here i'm going to change this character that used to fire on us now and we're going to drag in some other ai so what you can do and i'm not going to use the zombies here yet because they're not working quite right what i'm going to do is go to the human ai logic and i'm going to grab one of these and basically you can just right click here and create a child blueprint remember i told you guys always try to work from the child classes when possible so let's go ahead and we're going to grab this and we're going to bring this character in and then i want to bring in one more because we're going to create some different conditions for these characters and watch how they act all right so i brought one there one there and um let me see i think i might be able to bring one more but we're just going to do these for now it should be cool so once you have your ai in you're going to be able to go here on your ai when you have them highlighted and type the word team or we could just do enemy that's actually better just type in enemy and then you will see all of your options are here now so now per character you could select who the enemies of the characters are so this is my ai character that's going to be like my companion so we're going to say uh as enemy of of zombies and we need to make one more i'm sorry i didn't make all of them let's go back and we need to do one more condition we need to uh, go here and make one more variable and we need to call it is enemy of ai all right so we need to do one for the ai itself let's go ahead and we want to drag that into our team folder expose it and compile save and then we need to make another condition here so um that's the one we forgot so let's go here and we're going to drag off and we're going to get his enemy of ai let's copy all of this we're going to just duplicate it and bring it down remember we want to check this condition even if the other condition is true bring it down here now for the ai we know our characters who our characters are and so we will say uh, human ai character bp that's just the base one and um, we can use bp2 as our ai you can use either one of these i'm going to just go ahead and use this one because i like to just keep using the child blueprints instead of the main blueprints so let's go ahead and copy this name and we are just going to paste it here after the en like we did before and you'll see bp2 and so the actors that are in the scene should be we want to make sure that they are the right characters now under this main base ai class once you are done doing this we want to put teams instead of tags we want to go ahead and delete these tags because you're not going to need them anymore so once you have the tags added here you don't need them here anymore because that's basically going to have them set on all the time and we don't want them all the time we want to be able to select per character so delete all the tags except for the ones that don't say en do not remove those tags those tags are used for other functions in the project all right so now that we have that good we've added our zombie we've added our human ai characters so now we can go ahead and save this we can go ahead and highlight our character and you'll see enemy of ai and our other ai you just want to make sure that they are part of that that they are the ai that came from this child blueprint unless you're using this some people are just dragging this character in i'm saving this character as the master so that is why i'm not touching this one and dragging it in. i'm dragging in my characters off of this blueprint instead but now you will notice that all these have settings that we can set so i'm going to take one of them and let's go ahead and see who we have selected i'll make this one be an enemy of all so this character will shoot at whoever is closest to it it's going to fire at it now i'll drag in another so i dragged in one let's see do i have another one here this character i'm going to make be an enemy of just the player so you're going to see that this character comes after me and not nobody else i'm going to have my companion i already set up will be an enemy of zombies and ais will not be an enemy of the player or all and then i want to do one more and i just duplicated him 
and i'm going to make this character be an enemy of just the companion okay and not the player so now let's press play and we'll just see what happens so there you can see it it's going after and this one's only an enemy of me does not care about the ai player as you can see but the ai player was getting at him let's go ahead and try it again and then the guy over here is enemy of everyone so all right and he's pretty much killing me really fast if you want to you could change the strength of the bullets for now for this tutorial i am just going to uh increase the health of my character a little bit here so we'll just go in and press health that way we can get an idea of what's going on but i'll be showing you guys how to increase or decrease the amount of damage that the bullets actually do to the character but not in this video all right so there we go all right that's two and i think that's everybody so it looked like everybody worked everybody nope there's one more right here he had killed my companion so he wasn't even gonna shoot at me because he was only an enemy of the companion so i was able to just come in and get rid of him so that's it man that's how you do it that's how you set up factions that's a nice easy way to do it uh, once you start doing it it won't be time consuming at all to you it'll be a very easy process just remember that in the blueprint you want to make sure you have the e and the n before the character's name or else it will not work that's all i got for this one i'll be back with another one be sure to like subscribe Share the content and hit the notification so you know when I drop new content. Amp Capo, Blackadonis Games.